Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I want to make sure everybody's aware of this link to promo before I get going. Nick Burafato put this out. Your first investment bonus to celebrate Ripple's Q1 results, link to is offering $1,000 XRP for your first time Ripple investment. Not excited about a Ripple investment? Make any non-Ripple investment and receive $500 of XRP for your first investment on Link to, and this lasts until tonight at, at midnight Pacific time is my understanding. Now, Digital Perspectives had a good tweet just now. Once this lawsuit is over with SEC versus Ripple, there will be only there there will be only one digital asset with clarity is what he's meant to say here. It's only going to be one. There's only one digital asset that has an SEC case resolution in the future, and that's XRP. Um, how can XRP not take the number one spot for, for market cap? Now, folks, let me tell you what. Before all the FUD, a lot of people don't remember this. In 2018, when I believe there was a, uh, there was never a regulatory level playing field, but it was a non-issue at the time because nothing really had regulatory clarity. But in 2000, January 2018, when it was a horse race amongst the digital assets that all existed, XRP smoked everything else. It wasn't until all of the intentional and coordinated FUD and the the all of the and the coin market cap pulled out the South Korean pricing. It wasn't until the coordinated campaign against Ripple and XRP started that XRP didn't win on a when when they, we had kind of sort of an, a level playing field. XRP crushed everything else. It will happen again, and I believe it will also be for XLM. This morning, I added to my XLM stack. My goal is, and this is what I'm going to be doing. This is the DAI plan. Um, never forget, XRP and XLM hit. The, they hit, and I I'm, I'm, did that wrong. I put it on accident because of the spell check, I think. Hit, Elon, that edit button. We're still waiting on it. Uh, but they both hit their all-time high in January of 2018 on the same day, XRP and XLM. They're the same freaking technology, folks. Jed McCaleb helped start Ripple and then went to start Stellar. It's the same stuff, pretty much. Okay? That's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence, folks. So what I'm doing from now until the, the resolution of this lawsuit, and maybe even beyond, I don't know, I'm accumulating XRP, XLM, gold, and cash because even though you and I all agree that, that the, the United States has destroyed the value of the dollar over time, still, unless you're willing to place your bets on the end of the U.S. dollar, which I'm not willing to place my bets on that, what I learned from the financial crisis is you need to always have a lot of cash for a horrible situation, and that is the fact, Jack. And so I will be accumulating XRP, XLM, gold, cash. That's called the DAI plan. Now, Web3 is now at the point where Andrews and Horowitz and these guys are being made fun of. This, this guy says, so Web3 is being officially rebranded to Web A16Z and there's nothing you can do about it. And I said, Web3 is decentralized amongst all the partners' wallets, including Hinman, who went there. Right? Just a joke. Altcoins are ready to explode soon. Ethereum Bitcoin broke out of this bull flag pattern just like in the very similar 2017 Ethereum Bitcoin structure. A massive alt season followed after a second retest. I hope the guy's right. Charles Hoskinson was on with Maria Bartiromo yesterday. Wanted to play you this clip. I've always respected Charles Hoskinson. I, I, I think the guy's a good guy and I like him him and I also like him because he's the underdog and the Ethereum guys are the bad guys that are even trying to bash him. Do you worry that uh, international economies are faster uh, in terms of coming up with the regulatory boundaries, in terms of coming up with usages that it's kept getting out of the away from the United States? 
Well, that's an interesting question. So we have seen a global trend where uh, the status of the dollar as the world reserve currency, because we print so much money and because of recent political events, uh, it has diminished quite a bit. But it's not like what happened when the British went to the American standard, where it would go from the US to the Chinese standard. There's a global desire to move to a transnational standard that's not controlled by just one nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and nobody really wants, in the Western world, the Chinese standard to replace us. So blockchain is another example of a compromise solution. If you can't have another empire take over, can you have a transnational framework which is decentralized and no one actor has control over it yeah. that has fair rules for everybody and everybody's treated equally and no one can be left out of that order? Uh, before you go, I, I got to ask you a, a little about crypto because you are also the co-founder of Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Ethereum versus Bitcoin versus others. I mean, what should we understand about these different cryptos? Why did you uh, create Ethereum? Yeah, so there are generations. And so the Bitcoin was great. The problem with Bitcoin is that it can only do a limited set of things. You can kind of push value around, but there's no programmability there. That's why I use the example of the web. Before JavaScript came, you could build these beautiful websites, but you couldn't interact with them. You could just read the text, you could just see the pictures. And then when JavaScript came, then you could program them and interact with them. That's where YouTube came from and Facebook came from and so forth. So similarly with Ethereum, we added smart contract support, then you had programmable money. You could issue your own money, you could build your own financial applications, yeah. and they don't require a bank or an intermediary. With Cardano, we just kind of took those concepts and then we said, how do we make them scale? How do we make them interoperable with the wider financial world? And how do we add governance layers into the system so that you can kind of figure out how to advance the system and evolve the system? And it's a pretty complicated task. I love it. Charles, great. All right, that was good stuff. Now, Glenn Hutchins, who said that the value is in the protocol was did a rare appearance on CNBC this morning. He is one of the smartest guys that ever comments on this stuff. He's also connected. Listen to what he, I've, I've always felt like he's one of the guys behind the scenes of all this. For, uh, I don't think, and this is obviously very more important, but I, I really wanted his thoughts on Buffett and Munger these are the uh, Bitcoin and I don't know if you saw their comments I and, and you're sort of a similar age to those guys and uh, how come you uh, I'm 30 years younger how come <laughs> well, you, no but what do you think what do you what, how, so how, look I think people misunderstand what cryptocurrencies are uh, first of all currency is a failed analogy but the way to think about it is it's a new mode of commerce and a new paradigm of compute computing that is uh, transformation why don't they know this I don't think they've studied it. I don't uh, either. That's what I think. Uh, I don't think they've studied it. I, I, look, I think they've got a, a reflexive reaction to what they've seen in the financial markets. But to understand it as a currency is a failed metaphor. It's not about money. It's not about the money supply. Right. It's even not necessarily about the assets to trade on exchanges. It's about the companies using the technology to transform the way people get together to do commerce or something that's of value to them. A distributed ledger has been trying to do that for 3,000 years, a distributed ledger. Now it's been done. Yeah. It's been done. It's been solved through math and energy and in the internet, and it's powerful. But that's not just it. That's important. That's exactly right. But the decentralization of the communities, yeah. right, that can be joined by this ledger and which, where they use the token to create the incentives for people to maintain the ledger, creates a capacity for people to organize themselves in a way to do commerce that is um, transformational in terms of the cost of commerce by taking out the, the hierarchical middlemen that extract rents and um which all right enough of that okay there was a brad garlinghouse spotting screen looker brad garlinghouse is trying to look at her screen don't know what's going on there <laughs> then leonidas yesterday put out new ripple headquarters building and then digital perspectives put this picture out said building number one is new headquarters for ripple in san francisco building number two is the federal reserve building in denver colorado look how similar the buildings look almost like ripple wanted to have the look of a bank building oh and from day one ripple has been stacked with u.s treasury officials including 43rd treasurer um, Rosie Rios, systemically important. Any questions? Well, when I saw that tweet, I decided I'd go and check. About a year ago, it came out that Ripple had applied to be a company in um, in Wyoming. They called it Ripple Markets, and I said I went back and checked today. I said, FYI, Ripple Markets, Wyoming is still live. 
same state that gave both Avanti Bank, now Custodia, and Kraken a special purpose depository institution charter. Here's the document, Ripple Markets, Delaware um, LLC, that's Ripple's address. And then you have um, the guy that signed off is Nadium Jenna, who's at Ripple. And this is the guy, he's senior counsel at Ripple. So it's not our imagination, folks. All right. Uh, then there was this breaking micro strategy shares plunge after missing earnings by 794.67%, one of the largest misses in history. The company also faces digital asset impairment losses of $170 million from Bitcoin. You know, somebody said, I think it was Digital Perspective, some, said that, that Michael Saylor was like one of the biggest losers in the dot-com bubble. Man, what if history is repeating itself? I hope, I hope not. I don't want to see anybody get destroyed in this thing. Um, again, Congress should not cede its authority. This is, this is another representative taking a swipe at Gary Gensler. Again, Congress, Congress should not cede its authority to Gary Gensler, the SEC, uh, their desire to use regulatory regulation by enforcement to provide clarity for digital asset market participants is a power grab. We need responsible solution, not edicts from bureaucrats. Then Charles Gasparino had tweeted two tweets about this. Scoop, crypto industry leaders at the Milken Institute say the Dems led by Gary Gensler and Elizabeth Warren have become, op become openly hostile to, industry, to the industry while the GOP has begun a charm offensive with industry and its key leaders as the midterms loom story developing. Hey, look, if you're a Republican out there that in Congress that's listening to my voice, let me tell you what, folks, let me give you a dirty little secret going into your midterms. All you've got to do is real easy. All you've got to do is tap in to, to what is going on in the fight in SEC versus Ripple. Tap into the XRP, YouTubers, Twitter, and all of this. And we will literally, gladly help you get these people's butts kicked out of there. It is the best free advertising you could ever have, have for a campaign. And I cannot understand... It blows my mind how these Republican congressmen have not reached out to the real crypto lobby. And when I say real crypto lobby, not blockchain association, not chamber of digital commerce. These guys, they're not doing anything to help Ripple. The most powerful, the most powerful social media in crypto are the people in XRP that are following this XRP Ripple thing. All of this stuff... Back when we first started exposing all of this stuff, none of these people were calling for anything to happen in Congress. This is all happening because we've been putting a spotlight on all the shady stuff that went on from the Ethereum free pass until now and continues to go on, including all these crypto associations that have ignored this case and done nothing to help Ripple, nothing to help John Deaton. None of this, none of what's going on, the, 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 uh, the rush to go and try to get Congress to pass something, all the finger pointing at Gary Gensler, all of that is because of what people in the XRP crypto have been doing and Ripple and all of this. That's why all this got going. We we started the fire, and it's a good fire. It's a it's a it's a just fire. We're on the side of the truth here. The freaking lies and shadiness, all of that comes from the proof of work side. And I don't even want there to be a split. But none of those people seem to want to help this side. I would in a second stand up for the whole crypto community. But I have done. No, I have seen nothing. I've witnessed nothing for over eight years in this. I've witnessed nothing but the Bitcoin, Ethereum proof of work cr crowd trying to tear down Ripple and XRP and anything that's not Bitcoin, Ethereum, and proof of work. The second that those people reached out and said, "Look, we were wrong. We shouldn't have done that. We want to join forces." I'm on board. But it didn't start with us going after them. It started with that cross. Oh, well, the only, there is only Bitcoin and Ethereum and proof of work. But Congress people hear my words. Any of you guys, you Republicans that, that supposedly want to be reelected and crush all these guys. And I'm this, I'm not for either side. I'm for the guys 
that want the truth and want to stand up for what's right. You are a fool if you don't reach out to not just crypto social media, but the social media that has been fighting this Ripple XRP fight. This is the most powerful group in crypto, period, hands down. And they're afraid of us for a reason. You know what the reason is? Is because we're the ones that have been telling the freaking truth. The truth is on our side. It, and having the truth in your back pocket is more deadly than having a little note in your pocket like Joseph Lubin have. I can promise you that. All right. And Congressman, hey, ignore me at your own peril because I'm right about this. I am plugged in. I can see around corners in what's going on. Another scoop from Charles Gasparino, as Democrats call for massive crypto regulation and Gary Gensler pushes for SEC regulatory dominance, key crypto industry figures are reaching out to the GOP, focusing fundraising on congressional Republicans in midterms, top crypto players at Milken Institute conference say. Then we got this from John Deaton. He's retweeting Hester Pierce where she said the SEC is a regulatory agency with an enforcement division, not an enforcement agency. He said... Protect, protecting investors is not synonymous with filing enforcement actions. The Ripple XRP case has proven that the ones who get hurt are the retail crypto holders. He's right. Jake Travinsky from Blockchain Association. If I were in leadership at the SEC, I would hire a team of policy experts to analyze the unique properties of digital asset markets and craft a tailored regulatory framework that promotes U.S. innovation and competitiveness. Instead, we're told to expect more regulation by enforcement. And I said, says the guy who did nothing to defend Ripple when the SEC came, came for them and nothing to help John Deaton in his defense of over 66,000 plus XRP holders. And neither did his boss, the Blockchain Association and Kristen Smith. There she is. They didn't do anything. Let's finish Kava Network. Go give them a follow. It'll be in the top of the description of this video. The two biggest Web3 ecosystems meet on Kava in one week. Kava 10 goes live May 10th, uh, May 10th, 2022. Hashtag Cosmo, Cosmos EVM. There you go. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and tell your friends and family that if Congress wants to have any real effect in their reelection, whoever it is, I don't care if you're a Democratic or a Republican, if you want to get elected in the midterm and you're trying to go with a pro-crypto stance, look no further than the XRP, you call them what you want, XRP Army, XRP Community, people that are fighting for the truth on behalf of Ripple and XRP, the John Deaton crowd, whatever you want to call them, that's who you need to be talking to.